Chapter 204, The Price After I returned to Fortress La Palca, the speed at which we were defeating magical beasts increased. And the number of elven soldiers falling victim to the magical beast of the Demon King's army decreased. My friends and I continued to fight against the magical beasts of the Demon King's army that were exhausted to destroy the Demon King's army in a short period of time. Eight days after my return, the Demon King's army surrounding Fortress La Palca, which had five million troops, retreated. That happened thirteen days after the Demon King's army started its attack on Fortress La Palca. I decided to attack the main force of the Demon King's army, the group attacking the Northern Wall. I learned from last time that the Demon King's army's troops would scatter while retreating and that would increase the time to defeat them and we couldn't afford to waste our precious time. So, I decided to hunt the side with the most number of magical beasts. Beerank insect olipons and the ever-increasing number of child olipons surrounded and annihilated the Demon King's army. Thanks to their commander, they were quite active. The elves rejoiced in their great victory. 300,000 or so of them had defeated an army ten times larger than the Demon King's army. In the center of the fortress, many elves wrapped in cloth reported their victory to their comrades-in-arms who were about to be buried. The elves knew how big the victory was. The Demon King's army had called up all their troops from north of the fortress La Palca to attack but still lost. And since most of them were defeated, the threat of the Demon King's army to Rosenheim was almost gone. But the elven soldiers still had some work to do. That was to dispose of the corpses of magical beasts around Fortress La Palca. Not only did they have to collect the magic stones and materials, but they also had to dispose of the corpses before they started decomposing. Trying not to grieve over the death of their comrades, the elven soldiers worked frantically. I used my summons to help them. I had Beerank insect olipons and child olipons help in dismantling and transport, and Beerank dragons were in charge of the incineration. About two days later, I was in Tiamo. We had roughly completed our remaining duties and reported the current situation to the queen and the generals. That's our current situation. Well, thank you very much. We will definitely repay this favor. The queen said to me. The generals should have thanked him, but they were too busy fighting to speak. In the little over a month since my arrival, all of the Demon King's forces, including the reserve unit, had disappeared. The annual number of magical beats the elves defeated was usually around 500,000. This meant that we had defeated 14 times as many magical beasts during the war. No one doubted whether the prophecy of the Spirit King was true. They were only grateful that the spirit king, who realized the danger the elves were in, appealed to them again and again that there was a hero who could save them. No, no, it was all thanks to the soldier's dedication to fighting for their country and for Her Majesty the Queen. Also, Your Majesty, I think it's too early to say thank you. The war is not over yet. I didn't believe that I alone successfully defeated the Demon King's army. It was only because of the elven soldiers who fought for their home and queen that we were able to achieve so much in such a short period of time. Even when the strategy was mine. Even when, blessing of heaven, s, or buffs and assistance from my fish summons saved thousands of lives. Even when my summons took the initiative to fight in front of the wall to protect the elven soldiers. Even so, it was the elven soldiers who fought without fear against the army of hundreds of thousands or millions of the Demon King's army. The generals, who were in charge of the soldiers, were shocked by my words and once again expressed their gratitude to my friends and me in their hearts. But then again, Spirit King Rosen is still on Her Majesty's lap, glittering and navel-gazing. I guess it takes time to evolve. It's been more than half a month, hasn't it? He's going to be a spirit god, so a deity. Despite the gratitude of the queen and the generals, I imagine the evolved state of the spirit king. Indeed, Fortania is still under the demon king's army's control. Yes. I believe that the end of this battle is to retake Fortania from the demon king's army and defeat the demon general Razel. 
Thank you, Your Majesty, for your continued cooperation. Fortania, the capital of Rosenheim, was still under the Demon King's army after all. So there was no way the war was over. No, I never thought I'd be telling you this. Have you done something wrong to Emperor Jayamut? What do you mean, Your Majesty, the Five Continents Alliance always aims for a win-win situation? It's because of our prior investment that we can move forward so quickly. When I said that much, a questioning look appeared on Cecile's face. Because she didn't know what we were talking about. Prior investment? What's that? That's right, I decided on it after I separated from my friends and left Fortress La Polka. I didn't know what would happen, so I didn't explain it to them. Oh, Cecile. I had a little favor to ask Her Majesty to help me defeat the demon General Razel. What? What's that? Is it about Rosenheim's hidden treasure? Cecile remembered that I had once said, I wonder if there are any hidden treasures in Rosenheim, any great weapons or equipment. No, that's not it. I think we're going to need some help in defeating the demon General Razel. So I asked Her Majesty to ask Emperor Jayamud if he could help me. Help? My friends all said at the same time. Then, I noticed that the queen and the general's faces were twitching. My friends realized that I had been up to no good again. And yet, you're much earlier than I expected. I mean, if you've arrived, why didn't you just come in? Huh? I'm waiting for you to enter the hall. Are you shy? Come in and join the meeting. Then the door to the hall where we were opened and a young man with light blue hair entered the room, accompanied by an Ellie. 2. You're still too rough with your seniors. Alan, you should have a little respect for your seniors. What are you saying? I didn't know that my senior could come all this way to help Rosenheim in its predicament. Hey! Why is Helmios? Master Helmios, here! Cecile asked me firmly. I'll explain it in brief. Since I hadn't consulted my friends beforehand, I explained the situation to them. I had asked Helmios, who was in a fortress in the central continent, what I should do to defeat the demon general Razel. The strength of the demon generals that Helmios had told me about exceeded my imagination. I immediately concluded after hearing him that even with command, the fight would be very difficult. I was okay with the fight being difficult, but I didn't want any of my friends to die for our victory. I thought about what I could do, and decided to summon the hero, to Rosenheim. Helmios had already killed two demon generals before and his extra skill was very effective against demon generals. Including the one hundred or so, Blessing of Heaven, s I had, I delivered one thousand, Blessing of Heaven, s that day as scheduled. However, I put a condition on Emperor Jayamud via the Queen to give him that additional 1,000 heavenly gifts. Condition? What condition? To lend Hero Helmios out for 10 days. He cost a 1,000 elven elixirs. He was supposed to be a great hero, but my friends were looking at him with pity when he was treated like a pawn between me and Emperor Jayamud. Rosenheim is fighting a tough battle. We cannot give away such valuable elixirs for nothing. We must ask for a price. The price? How did you bring Master Helmios here? Could it be? Cecile asks me how Helmios got here. It didn't look like he came on a magic ship. The other day, this translucent woman came again with a big bird. She said she had already spoken to the emperor and... Helmios explained. I gave a brief explanation to Ellie and had Helmios fly to Rosenheim on Birank Bird's back. No, no, thank you for your quick response. Well, I can't just pick and choose what I want to do to win, can we? In order to defeat the boss, we need to form a party that can actually defeat him. It's a good thing that I found a wild hero in the central continent. To defeat the boss without losing anyone, it was obvious that we had to increase our party's strength. 
and fighting the said boss for the first time was even more dangerous. If Helmias hadn't come, or if the Jayamut Emperor had made the decision not to send the hero, then I had no plans of fighting against Demon General Razel. I would have decided to fight against him years later. Moreover, we also provided demonstrations of the precious, blessing of heaven. It worked so well that the Emperor of the Jayamut Empire agreed to it with two words. But the central continent is fine, right? With Helmios out of the picture, Cecile wondered if the central continent was safe. Oh, there's no problem there. There's nothing to worry about. Well, it looks like the battle is winnable, so Emperor Jayamut prioritized his relationship with Rosenheim. The first 1000, Blessing of Heaven, S had already changed the course of the war. Helmios said that the battle against the Demon King's army was already largely over. Well, let's talk in the meeting room. Okay. Helmios, his shoulders slumped from being used as a bargaining chip. Chapter 205, Hero We changed the location to a meeting room to discuss the future plans with Hero Helmios. The Queen, Marshal Sigur, General Lucidral, and the Spirit Mage Gataruga were also present. The meeting was so important that it was no exaggeration to say that it would change the future of Rosenheim. Thanks to that, we were shown to a meeting room with a round table where more than ten people could sit at once. We had a meeting over a meal as a sign of appreciation for Helmios, who had traveled a long way to be here. Oh! Long time no see! Looks good! Then, Helmios washed his hands over the vegetable-rich elf dish. As Helmios came from a commoner background, he didn't seem to eat in a very mannered way. It's been a long time indeed. Speaking of which, there's something that's been bothering me for a while. Yeah. What is it, Alan? You've been fighting on the front lines of the Jayamut Empire against the Demon King's army, haven't you? How do you still manage to travel to Rosenheim and the Baki's empire? He got a mana recovery ring from the Spirit King in Rosenheim, and he's been to the S-Class dungeon of the Baki's empire, so I wonder who handles the defense during that time? I tried to investigate the hero's life. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's not like we're always fighting the Demon King's army all year round. There's a lot more time when we're not fighting than people think. Helmios told us about his daily life as a hero. My friends were listening with great interest to his stories. In the midst of all that, only Karina was absorbed in her food. According to Helmios, battles with the Demon King's army were only fought a few months a year. The actual battle was even shorter. He said the war took three months at the most, with all the moving, sharing of operations, and post-war processing included. What do you do the rest of the time? Hum? Who are you? I'm Cecile, a member of Alan's party. When asked, Cecile replied in a normal manner. For Cecile, who had always seen me as unorthodox, the hero Helmios didn't seem to be someone she had to be nervous around. Cecile, there are about twenty academies in the Empire. I go around there to teach some students during the rest of my time. Twenty. Hey, I heard there were a few academies in the Empire, but that many? Is it natural, considering the population ratio? I heard that unlike the Ladash Kingdom, there are three different kinds of academy in the Jayamut Empire. The Jayamut Empire boasted a population and territory dozens of times larger than the Ladash Kingdom. The academies there didn't share the same curriculum, but were divided into three types. The first type was a year-long academy, where only combat training was given to ordinary soldiers. In the second type, the duration of the academy was three years, and a certain range of education was given, from general education to detailed tactics. In the third type, the duration of the academy was five years, and it provided proper education to nobles and those with valuable talents. The one country, one academy system decided by the Five Continents Alliance was the educational content of the second type of academy. 
When I had heard about this at the academy, I wondered if most of them were the first kind, stiffly trained in combat and sent to the battlefield, taught only that their superiors' orders were absolute. In addition, Helmios was the second kind and was educated at the academy for three years. I also raid dungeons within the empire and in other countries to get equipment. That's why I know about the Baki's empire. Basically, Helmios had a free pass that allowed him to go to any country, including other continents. I see, so that's why you and Sylvia are together. Sylvia? Alan, who's Sylvia? Ah, Karina. She's Helmio's party member, a master swordsman. Karina responded to the name Sylvia. It seemed that she wasn't just eating food. Yes. I have a party of about ten people. We usually have about ten members in our party, with a saint, a great mage, and a master swordsman as our basic lineup. Oh, so they're all rare three-star talents. I see, that's why his equipment is so good. I somehow understood the situation in the Empire. The Empire had to win the war against the Demon King's army, and their only way to do so was, of course, by winning the war. And to win the war, they needed to get stronger. Their method to get more powerful was to obtain more powerful equipment. In normal mode, one couldn't get any stronger than their level. The only way to get stronger after that was with equipment. That was also the reason why Helmios wore a ring that increased his agility by 3,000 in addition to his Orichalcum equipment at the Academy's martial arts tournament. The Empire was taking the lead in gathering parties that could enter and survive the S-Class dungeon. And three-star rare talents were best for the job. Thank you very much. I think I understand the activities of the hero. You said the war was over in the central continent, what is the situation? I knew that the situation was cleared up enough for the hero to come to Rosenheim, but I didn't know the specific status of the war because I had already lost most of my summons that I had sent to the northern part of the central continent. Oh, thanks to the elixir you delivered to me, Alan, we were able to defeat most of the magical beasts in ten days. So you're saying that the Demon King's army has been eradicated? This is important. The Demon King's army was good at retreats. I experienced it in the battles in Rosenheim, but I had also learned it in my classes at the academy. The Demon King's army would immediately retreat if the magical beasts were exhausted or they didn't see any chances of winning. No, I think they retreated when they lost 70 or 80 percent of their army. That's why we formed a team and are chasing them. We still have enough elixir to fight. Even if the Demon King's army retreated, they would just return in greater numbers and attack again. It seemed that the upper echelons of the military of the Central Continent had decided that they wanted to defeat as many magical beasts as possible to reduce future threat even if very slightly. So, were there any demons or demon generals in the Demon King's army in the Central Continent? I had also asked the same question via Ellie in the Central Continent. Helmio's answer at that time was that he did not know then. Oh, there was one higher demon and three demons, I think. We already defeated them. Oh, you mean your party? Yes. That's what parties are for. I see, I'm beginning to understand, the hero is forming a party in order to defeat the top A-rank demons and even stronger demon generals. That's too much for those soldiers to handle. Helmios fought like any other soldier in the fortress. However, there were enemies in the Demon King's army that other soldiers couldn't defeat. The Jayamut Empire seemed to have a strategy of letting a small party of elites, including the hero, defeat the higher demons and demon generals. And if a saint or great mage dies, a replacement will fill in. I didn't ask, but I understood. In a fortress on the central continent, Helmio said that his friends had been killed by a demon general. But now, he said, his party only had ten members. It's not as if there were originally twenty or thirty members in his party. More members was not always better. There would always be a structure that was easy to work with. 
probably the number of people who could easily operate was around 10, and if any of the main party's members died, the empire would replace them with new ones. So, Alan, as a summoner, right? Tell me what you can do. Of course. You're going to entrust your back to me, after all. My friends looked at me with surprised looks that said, What? You're going to tell him? Come to think of it, when I was taking my entrance exam, we had a dispute over whether to tell him or not. I ended up just summoning one Chowsk, a trank beast, and showing it to him. I only disclosed my skills when I felt it was necessary, and didn't when I felt it was unnecessary. That's all I used to decide whether to disclose my skills or not. I had to teach Helmios about my abilities and what I could do. I had decided that I couldn't defeat a demon general without Helmios, so we needed to know about each other's abilities to work together. Of course, I limited what I told him to what the elven soldiers had seen and heard already. I had already shown them and Helmios my abilities while fighting, so there was nothing wrong with explaining only that much to him. I didn't need to explain how I could strengthen or share senses with my summons. I only shared information necessary to fight together. He asked me what my summoning limit was, and I told him that since I had both elven elixirs and mana recovery ring, I wouldn't lose my ability to summon in a battle. Hum. Helmios seemed to sense that I hadn't explained everything. However, he didn't ask anything more. Is there anything else you want to ask? I asked Helmios with a hint that I would answer what I needed to. No, well I'll ask when I want to know something. Oh, I see. He was convinced of something. So let's figure out our plan for the future. No, that's okay, but before that, there's something I was wondering about. Yes, what is it? I know you're all listening, but only Alan and I are going to fight, right? Huh? What the hell? While Alan's friends were shouting in astonishment, Dabora stood up and shouted loudly in response to Helmio's question. Chapter 206 Friends Furious, Dabora stood up and punched the table. The table dented and the food momentarily floated off the plates. Why will you go alone? Dabora bit at Helmio's. It was because Helmios had declared that only he and I would go to defeat Demon General Razel. That's because you'll slow us down. Helmios asserted without any trepidation in the face of Dagora's ferocity. What did you say? My friends, except Dagora, looked at me with what does he mean? Look instead of Helmios. Hum, I don't mean to go alone with the hero, but, well, I see. But I have to say it. I wasn't planning to fight the demon general alone with Helmios. However, I had not been able to fully share what I heard from Helmios in the central continent to my friends. I looked at my friends and started explaining. Helmios says that only the two of us will go, but I want each of you to make the final decision. Does that mean I can decide for myself if I want to fight the demon general? That's what I meant. However, I'm going to talk about the strength of the demon generals that Helmios told me about. Then I talked about the strength of the demon generals. Dagora also sat back in his chair once I began to speak. Helmios had defeated two demon generals. However, he said that he had only been able to defeat them in five battles. And even with parties made up of strong members, such as master swordsmen and saints, many people died. Helmios closed his eyes and listened to me. I did not want my friends to know that, but I kept going, hoping it would help my friends to make a decision. I see, I know now that he is very strong. Alan, what do you think our win percentage is against Demon General Razel? Win percentage was one of many words that I sometimes uttered when we used to fight strong opponents such as an A-rank magical beast. I didn't always talk like we could beat all magical beasts, so my friends were used to hearing me talk like that. The demon generals are a lot stronger than I thought they'd be. I've heard that the strength of the demon generals varies a lot as well. Maybe 10% without Helmios and about 50% with Helmios. 
they is probably a demon great general too. I told them what I had heard from Helmios, that even if we lumped demon generals as just one group, they had very different forms and different strengths. Demon great general? As the word implies, they are one rank higher than demon generals. We probably won't be able to win if that demon comes out. Helmios once fought a demon great general and lost many of his friends. I also added that the friends Helmios lost were stronger than them. We talked about winning percentage, which in this case leads to mortality. When I said we only had 10% chance of winning, that also meant that we had 90% chance of dying. And even with humanity's hero, there was a 50% chance that we might die. Helmio spoke to Dogora, who had folded arms in silence. Dogora, you said. Why do you want to fight a demon general? You're not from Rosenheim, are you? There is no reason to take the risk of fighting, Helmios asked admonishingly. Because he's my friend. What? My friend is going to fight against a powerful enemy. My friend's country has been attacked. What other reason do I need to fight? I see. I see. To Dagora's immediate response, Helmios replied somewhat regretfully. Alan, what will you do if you find that we can't defeat the demon generals? Karina asked me, perhaps trying to change the atmosphere. Of course we'll run. Let's just say that our next meeting will be about how we can escape. I assured them with a determined look while joining Karina in changing the atmosphere. Boo! Oh, hey! Keon blew out. He wondered what all the tension was about. No, seriously, listening to Helmios, I can't be sure of winning. I'm sorry for the elves, but depending on the state of the war, we may have to wait a few years to retake Fortania and worship the world tree. If there is a boss you can't beat in your first fight, it's common sense to train and try again. Only my friends there understand the true meaning of my words. This meant that I had assured them that after a few years of training, I would have the power to surpass the demon generals. But then what about the promise you made to the spirit king? I won't be able to become a grand mage. Hey, you're showing your true colors. Cecile was worried that I wouldn't be able to fulfill the promise I made to the spirit king. Rather than a promise, she was worried that she wouldn't be able to become a grand mage. That's not a problem. Because I've already fulfilled my promise to the spirit king. Huh? The eyes of everyone at the round table focused on me, their voice leaked out in surprise. I want you to remember. What I promised was to save Rosenheim. It was never about taking back Fortania or the World Tree. The elves are safe now and they know that we were the ones to save them. I explained further. The threat to Rosenheim's existence had vanished. The seven million magical beasts of the Demon King's army were almost completely eradicated. Compared to that, losing nearly two-thirds of Rosenheim's land for a few years would not be a big deal. But that's only compared to the extinction of the elves. For the time being, the elves had to fight the Demon King's army using the Fortress Lapalka as frontlines, but since we had hunted down all the magical beasts till then, we didn't have to fight for at least the next year. It was then that my friends realized about my plan and my promise to the Spirit King. I promised the Spirit King as much as I can accomplish, without giving specifics. I don't know if I can defeat the Demon General. I wanted to make sure he got a reward from the Spirit King. I didn't need to raise the bar to get the same reward. Of course, we are not asking for anything more. Master Allen is completely right. The queen, with the navel-gazing spirit king in her lap, answered on behalf of Rosenheim. She didn't seem to care earlier either when I had said that the war was not over because of Demon General Razel. You have a really unusual way of thinking, Alan. To be honest, that kind of thinking scares me. But I guess it's better than using violence. Helmios agrees with my idea. 
As I said, I'll do my best to make it as safe as possible and increase our chances of winning as much as possible. Don't worry about that. So, before we get to the strategy, here's some basic information about my party. Before talking about our strategy against Demon General Razel, I started to explain our fighting style to Helmios. Helmios listened to me for about an hour, saying, I see, I see. Helmios said that he wanted to hear everyone's point of view, so my friends joined in the conversation as well, telling the story from the vanguard and rearguard perspectives. Well, thank you. It's a little different from the fighting style taught in the academy, but I got the gist of it. Can we do the rest outside instead of in the meeting room? I guess we've had enough of meeting room talk. It's good to plan strategies in the meeting room, but it's better to actually move your body, Helmios said. As for Helmios, I thought he had already heard everything he wanted in the meeting room. You mean you want to match our coordination with your movements? That's one thing, but I want to know how strong you really are. You should go out there and show me how strong you are and how you fight. I'll be your opponent. That's nice. I was the only one who's ever fought against you. I agreed. A sparring would be more instructive than words. In order to fight the demon General Razel, cooperation was important. Dogora, right? Yeah. You were so heroic just now. But I hope your mouth is not the only thing good about you. Helmios put his hand on the hilt of the sword at his waist and provoked Dogora. Wordlessly, Dogora grabbed the axe he had at his feet, placed it on his shoulder, and walked out of the room. What's with all the tension? Are you okay? Helmios doesn't want Dogora to die. I could understand Helmios' feelings. All of us also went out of the building following Dogora. We headed for an open ground, which was a short distance from the building. Your vanguards are a master swordsman and an axe knight. Your party is really small, isn't it, Alan? Looking at us, he murmured a few words. One of my party members has returned to the Baki's empire, but, well, but you are right. Well, then, Dogora, you can start. I want you to show me your extra skill. Dogora did not reply. Helmio seemed to have noticed something. Oh, I see. I'm sure you already know, but you're not thinking of fighting a demon general without being able to use your extra skill, are you? With that, he pulled out the golden orichalcum sword at his waist. What's the matter with you? Come here. I'll knock your naive ideas out of your head. Helmios continued his provocation against Dogora. At Helmios's provocation, Dogora grabbed his axe and went at him with all his might. Chapter 207 Fortania Three days have passed since Helmios arrived in the city of Tiamo in Rosenheim. My friends and I were on the ground a short distance away from the buildings. One large boy was lying slumped in the middle of the ground, breathing heavily. I think you'd better stay here, Dogora. Ugh, shut up. I'll be there. Three days have already passed. It's time to make a decision whether Dogora's extra skill is too tough for him to handle. I had hoped that Dogora would awaken to his extra skill like Karina did when she learned to use them through her training with Doberg, but it seemed that three weren't enough. Helmios, I've heard that even in the academy, some people take years to learn to use extra skill, is there any reason why there is a difference in the way they learn? I had heard at the academy that some people could use their extra skill before others. I asked Helmios, who taught practical skills at the academy, if he had any hints about the problem Dogora was facing. People said that talents with high, intelligence, and, mana, were better at learning. It was generally believed that it was so because their extra skill was similar to the way they used magic. So to begin with, swordsmen and axe knights weren't good at learning. That's right, as a teacher, he has been to a lot of academies. He is a hero in both name and reality. 
I thought about the life of a person who was raised and had lived as a hero from his birth. And I was convinced that I could apply my own experience to Helmio's analysis. Not only Cecile, who had been educated by a mage since she was a child, but also Kiel, a priest, said that he had learned to use his skills by attending church for a couple of months. However, I remembered that Karina and Dagora couldn't use their skills when we joined the academy, and they had a hard time learning it as well. I see, I think I can understand it. But with Doberg's training, Karina was able to use it in a day. Karina quickly remembered and asked if there was a reason why Dagora's memory was so poor. Dagora breathed deeply as he listened to the conversation between Helmios and me. Well, it's a well-known fact in the Empire that people who are stupid or don't think can easily use their extra skill better. Idiot. Huh. My friends uniformly picked up on the word idiot. Only Karina listened to Helmios with admiration. When I saw Karina listening to the conversation between Helmios and me while taking a bite of Mormonut, we were convinced. So to say, Dogora, you are hard-headed or stuck in common sense. Despite being in my party, Dogora seemed to have been certified as a sensible person. Are you saying I'm overthinking this? There are two extremes. Those with high intelligence, followed by those with low intelligence, can easily learn to use their extra skill. Someone in the middle has a difficult time learning it. That's what I'm talking about. What are you going to do? Keep going. I have only been loaned for ten days. I dared him to use the word ten days inwardly. Helmio seems to be rooted in the fact that he was loaned out. I've already decided on our battle plan, and I don't think we should stay here for too long. Let's leave for Fortania tomorrow. I wasn't waiting just to train Dagora. I had been thinking about and discussing our battle plans with Helmios. All of my friends, including Dagora, wanted to participate in the fight against the demon General Razel. I had planned to go with everyone who wanted to participate in the first place, so I made a plan to go with all of them and shared the plan with Helmios. When I shared the plan with Helmios, he just said well, then. I guessed he wouldn't object too strongly to Dagora's participation with that reaction. I had also been examining whether Karina could use her other skills while her extra skill was activated. Helmios was assured that he could not use his skills while his extra skill was active. All right. We'll leave tomorrow. That was how we finished everything we could in Tiamo. The next morning, we greeted the queen and the generals for our departure. Do I have to go? Gadaruga, the strongest man in Rosenheim and a spirit mage, asked me once again if I didn't want him to participate in the battle against the demon General Razel. Yes, we'll go alone. Gadaruga, please take care of Rosenheim while we are away. Okay, okay. Gadaruga was not participating in the fight. Gadaruga wanted to participate for the sake of Rosenheim and the queen, but I disagreed. If something were to happen to us, we needed someone who could fight in Rosenheim. The spirit king still hasn't woken up, huh? Well. I shifted my gaze from the naval sleeping spirit king on the queen's lap to the queen. Your majesty the queen. Yes. As I told you yesterday, our goal is to defeat demon general Razel. Since he is a powerful enemy, we may lose Fortania, is that okay? Of course, as long as the plague is shaken out of Rosenheim. Thank you very much. Now we can fight with all our might. Our objective was to defeat the demon General Razel. It didn't include the recapture of Fortania. I checked to see if there would be a problem if Fortania were to turn to the ashes, but was told that there would be no problem. Regardless of which part of Fortania we ended up fighting in, it wouldn't be left unscathed. May the blessings of the Spirit King remain with our heroes of salvation. Finally, the queen folded her hands in front of her chest and prayed for our safety. We left the building and rode B-rank birds to Fortania. There are seven of us, me, Karina, Cecile, Dagora, Kiel, Sophie, and Fermar. 
Helmios had already left the day before for his mission. In the evening of the second day, we arrived at Fortress La Palca. Since many days had already passed since the end of the siege at the fortress, the magical beasts around the fortress had been cleaned up considerably. My summons also took the lead in helping to dismantle and incinerate the magical beasts. We collected my share of the magic stones and spent the night at the Fortress La Polka that day. The next day we left in the morning and in the evening we could see Fortania. I could already see it from a short distance away, but up close I was overwhelmed by the size of the world tree. The world tree lit up by the setting sun is very fantastic. The capital of Rosenheim, Fortania, could be seen at the edge of the tree. For Mar, you are on your own from here. I started the plan. Yeah, take care of Lady Sophie your own. For Mar asked me to make sure that Sophie, the princess, would remain safe. I summoned another Birank bird for Fermar to ride on. While Fermar waited in the sky, we flew over the high walls of Fortinia, riding on Birank birds, and flew through the city. There were six of us entering the city, not including Fermar. What we were aiming for was the temple in the middle of the city where Ellie previously confronted the Demon General Razel. Demon General Razel was sitting on the Queen's throne in the temple. There's no one here. Cecile spoke up when she saw the cityscape. Fortania, the capital of Rosenheim, with an area that could have held a million people, was enveloped in silence. It must have been a beautiful city with wooden buildings full of history and emotion befitting the title Land of the Elves. It had fallen over two months ago and parts of the city seemed to have been set on fire and were now charred to a crisp. There was not a soul to be seen anywhere. I don't see any magical beasts either. Are they hiding in the buildings? It was a very quiet city. I had thought that magical beasts would be roaming around and intercept us, but that was not the case at all. Are they hiding and trying to catch us off guard? There's not a single magical beast here. We continued through the empty, empty city and entered the temple. We dismounted from Birank birds and entered the temple. There was no second floor in the temple, just a high ceiling supported by evenly spaced columns of straight, undistorted wood that looked to be hundreds of years old. At the back, there was an altar dedicated to the spirit king, with a throne in the middle. We continued straight until we reached the throne in the center of the temple. On the throne in the center, an odd-looking elf with bright red eyes was looking at us. Next to him, Neftala, the demon who had escaped before, stood glaring at us. So you've come at last. I see, you didn't send an army, you came alone. Are you Alan? Yes, I'm here to defeat you, Demon General Razel. Defeat me? Do you have no fear at all, knowing that you are going to fight against a demon general? He looked at me as if he were inspecting me. What? Didn't Ellie tell you? How could I, the Liberator, be defeated by a mere demon general? I showed my arrogant side to the demon general. My words matched the attitude that Ellie had previously shown to the demon general Razel. Oh, so you are ignorant and fearless. You are indeed the Liberator. But you misunderstand yourself when you are in the company of humans. Raising the corner of his mouth in a grin at Alan's words, the demon General Razel slowly stood up. Chapter 208 The Battle Against Demon General Razel 1 What? I don't know anything? What is this liberator anyway? I was irritated with Demon General Razel, who said I was ignorant. While I was at it, I asked what liberator meant. Wow, he's pretty big when he stands up. He's about 2.5 meters tall. His body size doesn't look like that of an elf. He doesn't seem to have anything that looks like a weapon, but his muscular physique looks like that of a vanguard's. Despite my demeanor, I checked Demon General Razel's body carefully from top to bottom. I wanted to know as much as possible before the battle about my opponent's fighting style, whether he was a vanguard who was good at physical attacks or a rearguard who was good at magic. 
I believed that fighting style could be determined by someone's body. I recalled that Demon General Razel had defeated my Beerank Spirit Ellie with magic before. Based on his appearance and past knowledge, I proceeded to analyze whether he was the type of enemy that could be both vanguard or a rear guard. Hum. That's why I'm saying you don't know anything. You're not going to tell me anything about the Liberator. Oh well, let's try provoking him. Don't play dumb with me, I'm listening. You're a dark elf, right? I want to know how you became a demon general. Demon General Razel's expression changed. Niftala, who was standing next to him, gasped. What's the matter? Your face changed color. You wanted the world tree so much that you attacked Rosenheim. Did you enjoy staying at Fortania, where the world tree looks so good from? Did the elven queen tell you that? The world tree was originally ours. The elves monopolized it. Demon General Razel spoke quietly, but his voice was clearly filled with anger. No, it wasn't. The world tree has always been under the care of the elves. Hum, you're a high elf, of Rosenheim royalty. The descendants of the prayer maiden appear to know nothing. You actually believe that the world tree was yours from the beginning? Whoa, Sophie got angry? Well, the world tree seems to be important to the elves and dark elves. It doesn't really matter to me who it belonged to. But still, it belonged to the dark elves, the queen didn't say anything about that. I thought about the history of the elves and dark elves around the world tree from the conversation between Sophie and Demon General Razel. There might have been a time thousands of years ago when the dark elves really did control the world tree. Perhaps the older Dark Elves led Dark Elf Razel to believe that the World Tree was theirs before he became a Demon General. I didn't know who the World Tree belonged to, but it didn't change what I was about to do. I don't know who the World Tree belongs to, but I do know for a fact that you've slaughtered millions of elves with your magical beasts in tow. I spoke up, interrupting the conversation between Demon General Razel and Sophie. That's certainly true. Many more elves will die in the future. That's why I'm here. What can you do about it? Of course we're going to defeat them. Do you have any idea how many people we've sacrificed? My words were the cue. We took our battle stances. Karina and Dabora readied their weapons, while Kiel prepared to heal us. Kiel and I had already applied all the buffs before entering the throne room as we knew we wouldn't have been able to once the battle began. Demon General Razel and Nephthala also reacted and tried to get into an attacking stance. In such a situation, the first attacker was me, who could use Fast Summon. B-Rank Dragon's commander Doradora appeared right next to Nephthala and used his awakening skill, Fires of Wrath. Commander Doradora spit out a ray of fire from its light-filled mouth. Demon General Razel and Neftala were enveloped in a flash of fire. Commander Doradora's Fires of Wrath burned a wide area in the temple. The wood-based building could not withstand the fires and was turned into charcoal. Some of the large log pillars also turned to ashes and fell down, unable to fulfill their role as pillars and it seemed that the temple was too small for Commander Doradora who was taller than twenty meter, and the roof of the temple was being peeled off with every movement of Commander Doradora. The temple was instantly half-destroyed by Commander Doradora. You have defeated one demon. You have acquired 7,200,000 experience points. We've defeated Nephthala. Now all that's left is Demon General Razel. I confirmed the defeat of Nephthala in my grimoire's log. I had half destroyed the historical and artful temple of Fortania, but I was focused only on the battle. I knew that it would happen since Demon General Razel was inside the temple. The elves could rebuild it after Demon General Razel's defeat. On the cover of the grimoire, there was a log that said that I had defeated one demon. Since I hadn't unlocked command last time we fought, Niftala was able to survive using his recovery magic, but he couldn't survive Commander Doradora's one attack. 
Oh, just one blow to defeat Nephthala? But out of the fire, Demon General Razel slowly emerged, with not even his armor burning. Zero damage? His nonchalant demeanor made me feel as if he hadn't suffered any damage. Karina, Dagora, he is a powerful enemy, don't let him hit you. All right. Oh. With that, Karina and Dagora plunged forward, weapons in hand. Demon General Razel seemed to have no choice but to deal with them. Jeff. Ha! Huh. Demon General Razel's fist crashed into Karina's weapon. Karina couldn't hold on and was blown away. The same went for Dagora. Keel, heal Dagora first. Yeah, I know. Demon General Razel faced Commander Doradora's awakening skill head-on, but he was almost unharmed. With his level of endurance, B-rank beasts or B-rank spirits, who also had offensive awakening skills, wouldn't have that much difference in the result. I changed my position in the formation to be between Cecile and Kiel and Karina and Dagora, and took the Midgard position while utilizing C-rank stone's special skill, substitute, and awakening skill, self-sacrifice, while using fast summon and managing Karina and Dagora's health so that they didn't die. Karina and Dagora had already been buffed by B-rank fish's special skill, turtle shield, and awakening skill, turtle barrier, awakening skill, so Demon General Razel's attack damage dealt 60% less damage than they were supposed to. Even so, Demon General Razel unleashed an attack of such power that if they weren't careful, they could die. Do you feel like there's too much of a power gap and you're not taking us seriously? We will settle this before you get the chance to use your extra skill. The higher demon blaster's extra skill was a threat. It took us an hour to defeat him after he used it. I predicted that demon general's extra skill would be strong enough to annihilate us. I wanted to finish the battle as soon as possible. Karina, extra skill. Yeah, I get it. When she replied to my words, Karina's body began to glow shimmer. Oh, the gate of extra. Demon General Razel mumbled a few words at Karina's change. However, there was no agitation on his face at all. Without even taking a stance, Demon General Razel headed towards Karina. Okay, Fermar, you too. Extra skill, please. The moment that Demon General Razel turned his attention to Karina, who had used her extra skill. Growling. At my order, the Birank bird, a kilometer away from the temple, chirped. Fermar was standing on the back of the Birank bird that chirped. With the sound of Birank bird's chirp as a signal, he set up his bow and aimed an arrow through a gap in the half-destroyed temple. Former's whole body glue like a shimmer. Fermar activated his extra skill, Arrow of Light. The arrow that he had held up began to glow without a light source. Then, with the glow intact, the arrow shot forward. Through the gap in the temple, towards the demon general's heart from behind where Fermar had aimed. As the Arrow of Light corrected its trajectory, it struck demon general Razel's back near his heart. Demon General Razel stiffened for a moment due to the sudden attack from behind. Hey! In that moment, Karina, who was heading for Demon General Razel, closed the distance at once, grabbed her greatsword and swung it down with both hands at his neck. Oh! Did she succeed to land a direct hit to his neck which has no armor? Former's extra skill, Arrow of Light, forced Demon General Razel to turn his consciousness to his back. And in the meantime, with the intention of cutting off his head, Karina while in her limit break, Mode swung her greatsword. So, you're as naive as you look. I can't believe you can't tell the difference between our abilities. Karina's greatsword stopped, motionless, at the neck of Demon General Razel. Karina's attack couldn't even get Demon General Razel to shed a drop of blood. Even though it was a direct hit to the neck, it didn't look like Demon General Razel received any kind of damage at all. Chapter 209 The Battle Against Demon General Razel, 2 Karina's attack did very little damage to Demon General Razel. 
Karina's extra skill, which was overwhelmingly strong and played an active role in our dungeon conquest in Academy City and the war in Rosenheim, was completely ineffective. Desperate looks came over my friends. Karina! Don't stop attacking! Increase your number of attacks! Yeah! Okay! I instructed Karina to erase the air of despair. The difference between their endurance and attack is more than I thought. Helmios had told me about the strength of demon generals. I had anticipated the strength of demon generals to some extent, but I felt that there was a tremendous difference in status between Karina and demon general Razel. Damage dealt was determined by the attack of the attacker and endurance of the receiver. To be more precise, the power of an attack was calculated by adding the effects of skill used and extra skill to the sum of your own attack and the attack of your weapon. The total endurance of the receiver was calculated by the adding their own endurance and armor's endurance. Critical hits occurred when attacked at vital points. These things were compounded and calculated into damage. Karina, who had used her extra skill, Limit Break, aimed for the neck, where there was no armor, and also attacked Demon General Razel's vital point, almost without damage. It showed just how much of a status difference there was between Karina and Demon General Razel. Closing the distance between her and Demon General Razel, Karina repeatedly struck with her sword. Karina's extra skill had a time limit, and once she used it, she couldn't use it for the whole day. So, Karina seemed somewhat impatient. She seemed to be desperately trying to use her skills while her extra skill was active. At that point, I could see Karina's sense of urgency that if she couldn't use her skills, she would lose. Demon General Razel repelled Karina's desperate attack with the back of his hands as if he were swatting insects. Karina swinging her greatsword and Demon General shaking his hands didn't match. I can't do it! The shimmering glow around Karina faded away. Her extra skills time limit was over. Your gate of extra closed? You may be a master swordsman, but you're just standing at the gate. That's the extent of your power, I suppose. Who is standing at the gate? Yes. Only those who can open the gate of extra and cross them are called the liberators. Just like you. Hum? Crossing the gate means being a liberator, not someone who has to liberate the world? That means I'm misunderstanding something, aren't I? Could it be that extra skills are? I understood what Demon General Razel's words meant. Perhaps Demon General Razel thought I was in extra mode. The word liberator probably meant someone who had opened their gate of extra that separated the normal mode from the extra mode and had gone beyond the limits of the normal mode. Hey, he's too strong. Alan, what are we going to do? Cecile's voice echoed as I was verifying Demon General Razel's words. Cecile, who had been casting spells since the start of the battle, asked me what to do. Ah, he is stronger than we expected. We'll have to retreat. Hum, are you done with your clever little plan? But you think I'm going to let you run away now? Demon General Razel, who had been listening to Cecile and my conversation, smiled and declared that he would not let us escape. Okay, you are completely off guard. Then, one Beerank beast rushed through the gap in the broken ceiling. The Beerank beast, who looked like a three-headed Cerberus, bared its vicious fangs and closed in behind Demon General Razel. Gururu! From behind again, huh? How many times do you think that the same plan will work? Before the Beerank Beast could attack, Demon General Razel waved his hand and blew away the Beerank Beast. The difference in status was so great that Beerank Beast immediately turned into a glowing bubble. It doesn't matter how many of these little fish you take out. Just as he was just about to tell me that it was useless to send out any number of my summons. From the tip of the glowing bubble, a young man with light blue hair wearing golden armor appeared, while holding a golden sword. Demon General Razel was saying something, but stopped. 
Hero Helmios was hiding on the back of Birank Beast. Phoenix Sword Why are you here, Helmios? To defeat you? Glowing like a shimmering flame, Helmios used his extra skill, Phoenix Sword, and thrust his Orichalcum Sword into the back of Demon General Razel. The sword pierced through the armor and stuck out from the chest of Demon General Razel. However, that was not enough to kill the momentum, so Demon General Razel fell face down and slammed into the ground. The floor was shattered and a wide circle imprint formed by the impact of Demon General Razel being slammed into the ground, and he sank deep into the ground. He is ridiculously powerful. That was an opponent that Karina couldn't damage at all. Wow. Karina was impressed with Helmios, who defeated Demon General Razel with a single blow. Helmios pulled out the sword that he had thrust into Demon General Razel's back and shook off the purple blood on the sword. Your strategy worked, Alan. Thanks to you, we were able to defeat him without any sacrifices. No, no, I'm glad you are here to give the decisive blow. I had known that my friends and I had no decisive attack that could defeat Demon General Razel in one shot. For that, I relied on Helmio's extra skill, Phoenix Sword, but it also had a one-day cool time once used. We needed to make sure that Helmio's hit Demon General's vital point with his Phoenix Sword. We needed to formulate a strategy and set up Demon General Razel based on that. For that reason, I secretly brought the hero to Rosenheim. No one except for some important people in the central continent knew that Helmios was in Rosenheim. I had also asked the Jayamut Empire for an information blockade. Demon General Razel had thought that my friends and I, who had defeated the Demon King's army and mistakenly thought that we were strong, had come to fight against him, a Demon General. It's not easy to use your friends and even yourself as bait, is it? You've got good friends. No, no, no. Helmios looked at my friends and praised them. My friends and I, who were not strong enough to deal with Demon General, were used as bait. The more power one has, the more attention Demon General Razel would give us. And the more attention he paid to us, the weaker he was against Helmio's surprise attack. No one disagreed with my strategy when I said it in the meeting room. Well, he is a little stubborn. I had been checking my grimoire for a while. I waited for a while but no message came up saying that I had defeated a demon general. Helmios, it looks like he hasn't been defeated yet. Let's put an end to him. Huh? Yeah. I guess so. He isn't dead yet? As Helmios was about to pull his sword from his waist. When did you get the hero to join you? I see, so you've done all this preparation. Thanks to that, you were able to crush one of my three hearts. I heard a voice coming from the hole behind Helmios. What? Then, Demon General Razel, whose chest was pierced by a large sword, slowly rose and emerged from the ground. Oh, no. We couldn't defeat him in one attack. We were upset, but we picked up our weapons and prepared ourselves nonetheless. What's up? You're not attacking? Then look at the power I gave up everything to attain. I became a liberator to obtain the world tree. I didn't have any skill that allowed me to gauge my enemy's strength. However, I could tell that he was getting stronger by seeing the obvious change happening before my eyes. Demon General Razel's body swelled and became huge as it tore through his armor. He had huge legs reminiscent of a carnivorous dinosaur, wings reminiscent of a reptile, and six arms sprouting from his shoulders and sides. His face changed to a magical beast-like face that seemed to embody hatred, and the face of the elf disappeared. This is not good. I'll buy you some time, so run. With that, Helmios grabbed his sword and headed towards Demon General Razel. A mere hero who hasn't even crossed the gate of Extra. I don't care how many people like you gather, you will never defeat me. Gaha! Three of his six arms formed fists and struck Helmios. 
Helmios was blown to the wall further behind Kiel and Cecile, who were the furthest away from Demon General Razel. The wall shattered with a bang and Helmios was there in the rubble. No one is getting away. As soon as he said so, the transformed Demon General Razel rushed toward Alan and the others. Chapter 210 The Battle Against Demon General Razel 3 Demon General Razel had not been defeated. He transformed into a vicious magical beast and walked towards us. I immediately used a blessing of heaven for Helmios, who was blown to the ground by Demon General Razel. Once you're a liberator, you don't have to use your extra skill. Right? Hum? That's right. I see, so your current attitude is the real you. You've been deceiving me, haven't you? It's both of us who were deceiving each other. You're a demon general, but you are pretending to be dead. Hum. We just have to win. Isn't that right? Demon General Razel was not unconscious when he was hit by Helmia's extra skill, the Phoenix Sword. He was trying to catch us off guard. However, I was looking at my grimoire the whole time, checking the log which exposed him. It looks like he stopped playing dead because of me. And I realized that I had made one big mistake. There were three modes available for me to choose from, Normal Mode, Extra Mode, and Hell Mode. And there was a special skill, called Extra Skill, that only people in Normal Mode could use. I had two questions. The first was why Extra Mode and Extra Skill had similar names. The other question was why I didn't have an Extra Skill. Demon General Razel answered both of my questions. Normal Mode could borrow the power of Extra Mode for a certain time. That was what everyone called the Extra Skill, and demons called it the Gate of Extra. And I guess that Liberators were those who were in Extra Mode and a liberator in extra mode couldn't use extra skill because they had no need to do so. And extra mode allowed someone to use their extra skill at will without cooldown. In my case, they would be fast summon and command. Helmios also said that the use of extra skill is similar to the use of normal magic and skills. That brought me to the second question, why couldn't I use extra skill? In Hell Mode, I could acquire skills at the same tier to what everyone called extra skill while leveling. So there was no reason to display them in a separate column from skills. You've lived for thousands of years, and yet you were fooled by a child. Do you stop growing when you become a demon general? Enough. No more stalling. It's all for nothing. You will die. Let's talk some more. Oh! He's caught on! Demon General Razel seemed to have noticed that I was trying to buy time by talking in vain. Helmios, having recovered using Blessing of Heaven, returns to the front line. I'm sorry. Let's retreat, everyone. Oh! Yes, it is all in vain. Think of the despair we've suffered! Karina and Dagora fought back but the difference in power was even more apparent than before. Demon General Razel stopped avoiding and blocking Karina and Dagora's attacks. The adamantite weapons struck Demon General Razel's body but only made a sharp, hard sound. Oh no, my summons disappeared in an instant. Searing stones were reducing the damage my friends were taking, but even with multiple Searing stones using substitute on Karina and Dagora, they were disappearing with just one attack. Oh no, we can't do this. It's just as I predicted. Except for the Helmios Phoenix Sword, we have no way of dealing some major damage on Demon General Razel. He is getting serious, too. We won't be able to escape like this. Helmios had entered the fray, but he couldn't change the situation very much. Although Demon General Razel reacted to Helmios' attack by defending against them, Helmios was no match for him. Sophie! Yes, Master Alan. I'm sorry, but we need time. I need you to manifest a great spirit. 
if we didn't attack in sufficient numbers, we were going to be annihilated. To avoid that, I told Sophie to use her extra skill, Great Spirit Manifestation. A Great Spirit was far stronger than a B-rank commander. I wanted to escape while the Great Spirit would shield us. Oh, um. I've been trying to call them for a while now, but I'm having a little trouble. What? I'm sorry. This has been happening recently. Sometimes they don't answer. Huh? Where are you great spirits? Are they at home? Hey, come on out. Sophie's extra skill, Great Spirit Manifestation, which used to always summon a great spirit was not working for some time then. All right. Just do your best to summon them. Yes. While I was talking to Sophie, the situation got much worse. Helmios, Karina, and Dagora had fought hard to withstand Demon General Razel's heavy blows, but they were on the verge of defeat. We were no match against a serious Demon General. The Vanguard's duty was to protect the middle and rear guards. However, the three Vanguards were having a lot of trouble handling Demon General Razel. Karina was blown away, and using the gap left, Demon General Razel closed in on me, who was in the middle guard position. Mirror! I quickly summoned B-rank Stone Commander Mirror between me and the oncoming Demon General Razel. Niftala told me that this thing repels attacks. As he said this, Demon General Razel went around Mirror and approached me. Niftala had completely leaked B-rank Stone's ability. A fist slammed into my stomach. Gah! Spitting out blood, I flew away as I bounced off the ground. He knew about my ability? I was wondering why you didn't use any long-range attacks. All along, I had been waiting for Demon General Razel to use powerful magic or other long-range attacks. I was starting to wonder if Demon General Razel always only fought using his body without using magic, but it seemed he was wary of having his magic bounced back. While being blown away, I used a Blessing of Heaven to heal myself. Blessing of Heaven also fully healed Karina who was nearby and she returned to the front line. But that didn't change the situation. It's time to make a decision. In exchange for my life, I'll at least be able to keep Demon General here. Alan collapses and recovers, but chooses to let his friends escape from Demon Generals even at the cost of his life. That's when it happened. Dogora was blown away near me. Dogora! Are you okay? I use a blessing of heaven to heal Dogora. Yeah, no problem. Good. There it is. I'm afraid it's going to be tough. I'll take. It's kind of nostalgic, isn't it? Hum? Back when we were in the village, Karina was so much stronger than us that we would always end up exhausted, wouldn't we? This is how we used to lie in Karina's garden and look at the sky. Dogora suddenly started talking about Karina Village. Dogora and I, battered and bruised from dealing with Karina's obsession of playing night, used to look at the sky over the village together. Oh! What are you talking about? I knew you were a strange guy from that moment on. But you turned out to be so amazing. So what are you saying? Hey, don't set weird flags. I'll buy you some time and then you can run away. Tell my father in the village that I'm sorry that I never returned to visit him after entering the academy. Alan, promise me that. With that, Dogora stood up and ran toward Demon General Razel, with whom Karina and Helmios were fighting desperately. Oh, hey! Dogora! Dogora could no longer hear my voice. Oh! Dogora shouted and ran as fast as he could towards Demon General Razel. The question of extra skill was no longer on Dagora's mind. He believed I would tell his father in the village what he told me to. Everything about the future, about the past, everything, slipped from Dagora's mind. All of his thoughts disappeared and his head became empty. The adamantite axe in his hand felt lighter than usual. 
The only thing Dagora could think about at that moment was to strike his axe into Demon General Razel. Hum, little fish, time to die. Demon General Razel snickered at Dagora's cry of resolve and clenched his fists, ready to strike Dagora, who was rushing towards him. When he was just ten more steps away from Demon General Razel, a change appeared in Dagora's body. Dagora's body began to refract and glow a shimmer. Cray away! Hum? Demon General Razel defended himself with his two right arms against Dagora's attack without much spirit. He thought he probably didn't need to defend himself, but just in case. Then, Dagora, who was rushing towards him, put all his strength into his axe and delivered a full power attack. Ha! The two arms Demon General Razel used to defend himself shattered in an instant. In addition, Dagora's axe dug into his shoulder. He desperately tried to pull it out with his right arm, but it had dug in too deep to pull out. Dagora's extra skill, body and soul, dug in even deeper and reached Demon General Razel's chest as he plunged to the ground on his knees. Die, die, die. Don't get carried away, little fish. But. Dagora. Demon General Razel made a hand sword with his right arm, which was now reduced to one after losing two, and poked Dagora in the stomach. The adamantite armor that Dagora was wearing shattered, and Demon General Razel's claws reached up to pierce through his back. Dagora was covered in blood and blown away. Chapter 211 The Battle Against Demon General Razel 4 A bloody Dagora was blown away. I immediately used a blessing of heaven to heal the motionless Dagora and ran towards him. Hey! Get up! Dagora! I looked at Dagora's stomach. The wound on his stomach had been completely healed by blessing of heaven, but he didn't regain his consciousness. Hey! Hey! I touched my neck, but I couldn't feel his pulse. He wasn't even breathing. Keel, use, God drop. Okay. Keel rushed over and put his hand on Dagora's chest. Then, with his eyes closed and his mind focused as if in prayer, Keel's body slowly began to glow like a shimmer. You've got to succeed. You can't fail at a time like this. With that, I turned my back on Dagora and faced Demon General Razel. For the sake of my friends who couldn't move, I was determined to defend that place to my death. Oh, to have one heart crushed by a little fish like that. Demon General Razel had lost two of his hands and one of his three hearts because of Dagora's attack. He stood up, though he was bleeding profusely. Karina, we're attacking. Helmios called out to Karina, saying it was our chance to defeat him together. Yeah. Okay. Karina was also worried about Dagora, but she didn't run over but pointed her greatsword at Demon General Razel. Demon General Razel, who had lost two hearts and two arms, was somewhat weakened, but he still seemed to be able to fight. Karina and Helmios, my summons, Cecile's magic, and former's arrows were attacking Demon General Razel from all sides, but he fought them all off. We couldn't deal a decisive attack like Dagora. Demon General Razel continued to defend against Helmios' attacks and ignored others since he was the only one with over 10,000 attack. In the midst of all that, the cut that Dagora had made started to heal and Demon General Razel's lost arm began to regenerate. If we let this continue, we will be back to square one. Against the overwhelmingly powerful Demon General Razel, I desperately thought of a way to break through. Oh, please! Great Spirit, please come out! In the meantime, Sophie was also desperately pleading to Great Spirits. In that situation, a great spirit, which was more powerful than a commander summon, could change everything. In the midst of the crisis, Sophie kept trying to activate her extra skill, great spirit manifestation. Sophie, that's enough. Take Kiel's place instead. I tried to ask Sophie to take Kiel's role as the healer of the party rather than trying to use great spirit manifestation, which she couldn't do. That was because Kiel was using his extra skill, God's Drop, on Dagora at that moment. That was when it happened. And there it is. Oh, thank you so much. With the sensation of losing all her mana, joy leaked from Sophie's face. 
Did you manage to summon a great spirit? Yes, yes. What? Who is this? Sophie asked, confused. She had summoned a great spirit I had never seen before. The mass of light gradually took shape. It was smaller than any of the great spirits that Sophie had ever summoned. It was like a small animal. It looked like a flying squirrel. Oh, I guess I'll have to try. Ha ha. Oh, you're. Spirit King? Yes, descendant of the prayer maiden. What do you want? Nonsense. Spirit King, you can't participate in this war. You are breaking the laws of this world. Demon General Razel criticized the manifestation of the Spirit King, saying he couldn't accept it while fighting Helmios and Karina. What are you talking about? Aren't you demon generals the ones who broke the divine truth and violated the rules set by divine realm first? I'm glad I held back from becoming a spirit god, because with the current power of this descendant, it might have been tough to manifest as a spirit god. Ha <laughs> ha. He was holding back from becoming a spirit god in order to help us? It meant that he had remained on the queen's lap for more than twenty days without becoming a spirit god lying on his back. Give us strength! Give us the strength to defeat him and save our people. Well, I heard you. I, the Spirit King Rosen, will be using the Spirit King's blessing. Ha ha. After saying that much, the Spirit King Rosen, floating in midair, began to make cute little movements, waving his buttocks. Then, countless bubbles of light fell from the sky, fluffing up like snow. Everyone touched by the bubble of light, including Helmios, began to glow. It's amazing. I feel so empowered. Cecile was the first to notice the changes in her body. Everyone's status has increased by 30%. I checked everyone's status in the grimoire and noticed that everyone's status had increased by 30%. Karina and Helmios continued to engage with Demon General Razel with their status elevated. Rosen! You're thwarting our dreams again! Of course! If you try to stain the world tree with blood, I will appear before you again and again. Ha ha. Rosen, the spirit king, had fought against the dark elves while supporting the elves, the prayer maiden, when he was an infant. Demon General Razel fought with Karina and Helmios while glaring at the spirit king. Everyone's strength increased, including Karina and Helmios. Hum. If I give too much advice to Alan, Lord Elmia is going to get mad at me. No, he won't know about it at all. I'll keep my mouth shut, so please advise me. Again, you can't be sure. Well, I'll tell you just one thing. My blessing will reduce the cool time to zero for one time. Ha <laughs> ha. That's all he said, but I understood. Everyone. You can use your extra skill again. Oh, that's true. This time. Karina's body glowed like a shimmer. Once you use an extra skill, you can't use it for a day, so timing is important. However, when Karina heard that she could use it again, she immediately used it. It seemed that she really wanted to use her skills while her extra skill, Limit Break, was active. Goo! Why can't I do it? Karina, even while her extra mode was active, was still outclassed by Demon General Razel in all of her status. She desperately tried to use her skills even though she was blown away time and again. Karina knew how important it was for her to be able to use her skills while her extra skill was active then. In the meantime, I called out to Kiel. How's it going, Kiel? Could you save him? No, I couldn't. Kiel said regretfully. Dogora looked as if he was asleep. Thanks to the Spirit King's blessing, you should be able to use you, God Drop, once more, so make sure you save him this time. Yeah, I will save him for sure this time. Having said that, I turned my back on Dogora and Kiel, and continued to fill in for the absence of Kiel, the healer. Sophie alone couldn't use recovery magic enough to deal with Demon General Razel. Karina. Spirit King Rosen called out to the impatient Karina from behind. Uh-huh. Trust the voices of your friends. What Alan is saying. I'm not lying. Ha ha. You can give advice to everyone but me, right? But this helps. Karina. You can definitely use your skills. 
I did my best to shout that Karina could use her skills. Uh huh. Huh? All right. Extra skill allows someone to enter extra mode for a fixed interval of time. There is no reason why you can't use normal mode skills while in extra mode. I knew this because of what Demon General Razel told me about extra skill and extra mode. Believing my words, Karina desperately swung her greatsword. What the hell are you doing? You stupid Q. Demon General Razel was clearly annoyed with Karina, who was trying to test something after listening to Spirit King Rosens and my advice. Gah. Karina shouts out the name of her skill and continued to wield her greatsword. Now that the Spirit King has come out, Demon General's attacks have become somewhat sloppy, right? I didn't know if it was because of something related to Spirit King Rosen or if Demon General Razel was getting tired, but his attacks were losing their precision. Karina doesn't have much time left. Karina! What the hell are you doing? Even that Dogora could have used the extra skill. I encouraged her, saying that Dogora could do so, so why not her? I can use it. I can use it. Thunder Sword! Alan's words were all Karina could hear. I don't understand. When Demon General Razel had said that much, what happened a little earlier came to his mind. He had just lost two hands and a heart to a human child that he thought was a small fish. Looking at Karina again, Demon General Razel felt a chill. A buzzing thunder resided in Karina's greatsword. I can use it. Thunder Sword! Gah! Demon General Razel received Karina's attack and it was the first time he took damage from her attack. Then he twisted his face in pain. Oh, the attacks are finally starting to come through. The combination of the Spirit King's blessing, the extra skill status increase and using her own skill finally allowed Karina to surpass Demon General Razel's endurance. Oh! We are finally starting to deal some damage. Don't run out of extra skill yet. Gee ha! Demon General lost another right arm because of a coordinated move between Helmios and Karina. It seemed that Dagora's extra skill, body and soul, which crushed Demon General's two arms and a heart, was more powerful than Helmios and Karina's skills. Yes, I did it! Don't look away, Karina. I will finish it with one blow. Karina wasn't the only one who could use her extra skill again. Helmios could also use his extra skill, Phoenix Sword, once again. Demon General Razel finally began to feel fear. I gave up everything to become a Demon General. I cannot be defeated here. After saying that much, he spread his huge wings and took off into the sky, as if to bounce off the oncoming Karina and Helmios. He was moving further and further away from the temple towards the sky above the city. What? You're running away? Seriously. My thoughts were short-lived. Even higher than the clouds and further away from the temple, Demon General Razel raised his three remaining left arms to the sky. Then, what looked like a giant ball of darkness began to form. He seems to be trying to blow it up with some powerful magic. What's this? That's a hell of a lot of power. It was his last attack. Can this be reflected? No, it's more like hum. It probably contained enough, mana, to reduce the temple to ashes. I felt it was too powerful that even Commander Mirror wouldn't be able to reflect it back. But that was not the point. I found that situation to be a lot more favorable than threatening. Cecile, can you drop a small meteorite on Demon General Razel? What? What are you talking about? Fortania will be destroyed. Cecile was hesitant to use her extra skill, small meteorite, inside the temple. I got the permission to destroy Fortania. Besides, with all that magic offsetting it, it probably won't be destroyed that much. I didn't know though. Cecile said, all right, and concentrated on her, mana. Small meteorite. 
a lump of burnt red rock, as big as the huge jet black magic ball, fell on Demon General Razel with tremendous force. Oh! Small meteorite is bigger thanks to the Spirit King's blessing. Ridiculous! I can't believe you are using this kind of magic in a place like this. Demon General Razel tried to defeat us by attacking from a distance with a powerful magic attack, but he hadn't expected us to be capable of doing so. He went rigid, trying to cancel out the huge chunk of rock with the jet black magic ball he created. Well, Helmios. The target has stopped moving, so please take care of it. Desperately trying to cancel out Cecile's small meteorite with his own magic, Demon General Razel was unable to move from his spot. That's just like you, Alan. Helmios carried his sword and prepared to throw it. Then, Helmios's body began to glow like a shimmer. Phoenix sword! Helmios threw his Orichalcum sword as hard as he could. What? My heart! The sword seemed to be sucked into Demon General Razel and it pierced his last heart. Demon General Razel fell down after losing his last heart. Two things fell on him, his own magic, which went in a rigid state due to the loss of mana supplied, and Cecile's extra skill, small meteorite. Demon General Razel fell to the ground, collapsing part of Fortania. Chapter 212 Under the Tree In the end, Cecile's extra skill, small meteorite, and Helmia's extra skill, Phoenix Sword, crushed Demon General Razel's heart. Hum, I still don't see any logs of Demon General Razel being defeated. I was checking my grimoire to see if Demon General Razel was still alive. I didn't get a message saying you have defeated a Demon General. Till then. Demon General Razel fell quite far away from the temple, and I was certain that he hit the ground. There was no sign of him coming back to the temple or attacking us again with magic from a distance. Did he take too much damage and run away? No way. We can't let him run. Demon General Razel didn't seem like someone that would abandon the world tree and run away to me. What should I do? I'm going to go to where Demon General Razel is. Dogora, wake up or I'll leave you here, okay? Dogora? What, you want to sleep? Dogora, lying on the ground with his eyes closed, said nothing. It was as if he was dead. Hey! Is Dogora safe? While I was talking to Dogora, Karina came running up to me. Dogora didn't move as all of us rushed towards him. Keel, did you not succeed? No, no, Karina. I succeeded this time. Spirit King's blessing helped me a lot. We can't experiment with his extra skill, but does his success rate increase with intelligence? In percentage terms, I'd say 100% at about 10,000 intelligence. Dot. I learned something new about Kiel's extra skill, God Drop, in that fight. We knew that the extra skill, God Drop, had the effect of reviving the dead. But the probability was not 100%, and it was not constant. It wasn't something we could experiment with much, but it immediately hit me that there were resurrection spells in my previous life's game that had a variable probability depending on the user's intelligence. Extra skill, God Drop. Revives the dead. If the target has been dead for too long, they can't be revived. The probability of resuscitation is 10% at 1000 intelligence and 100% at 10,000 intelligence. Cool down time is one day. Maybe the reason Kiel succeeded the second time was because the Spirit King's blessing raised Kiel's intelligence? I'm going to look for a ring in the S-Class dungeon to raise Kiel's intelligence to 10,000. I recorded the results of the analysis and future tasks in my grimoire. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit King, for saving us. It's okay. It was nothing. Ha ha. If it were a normal great spirit, they would have already been released from great spirit manifestation and would no longer be there, but for some reason, spirit King Rosen climbed on Sophie's shoulders and showed no signs of returning. 
Hey, Alan, why are you so calm? Dogora won't wake up. No, Dogora is perfectly healthy. I don't know why he isn't waking up. Huh? With that, my friends looked at Dogora again. The reason why I was previously talking to Dogora was that he was perfectly fine in my grimoire. You told them even I could use extra skill. Dogora whispered with his eyes closed. Yeah. I heard you say that. That even someone like me could use extra skill. Hum? Did I say that? I then remembered saying something similar while trying to encourage Karina to use her skills while her extra skill was active. Apparently, Dogora was sulking. He had already been successfully revived then and seemed to be conscious. Well, I mean. Sorry. Then Dogora opened his eyes and stood up. Dogora! Everyone rushed to Dogora and made him squirm. It was probably the real reason why he didn't wake up, I thought, looking at his embarrassed potato face. So, what happened to the demon general after all? He isn't dead yet. Let's go and check on him. Oh, Fermar is here. From the ceiling of the temple, which was severely broken in the battle with Demon General Razel, came Fermar riding on Birank Bird's back. Lady Sophiron, are you all right? Well, Demon General Razel hasn't been killed yet. Let's go and finish the job. Oh! My friends, Helmios and I got on the backs of Birank Bird's and headed towards Demon General Razel. This is terrible. I looked at the cityscape. Hey, Cecile, isn't this terrible? Huh? Are you trying to blame me now? You told me to do it. I tried to blame it on Cecile, but it didn't work. Guruchi. Cecile, riding behind me, choked him. Cecile's small meteorite and the magic ball of Demon General Razel had combined to create a tremendous force. The whole area around Fortania was roundly depressed, and one-third of Fortania was gone as if it had been scraped away. Even in places that hadn't collapsed, the impact of the small meteorite and magic ball had caused buildings to collapse, and the situation was dire. Oh, there he is! Demon General Razel was lying in the center of a hole slash crater. We got down from Birank Birds and approached him. Demon General Razel was looking up at the sky in silence. Demon General Razel's body has lost all of his remaining arms due to Cecile's extra skill, small meteorite, and his own magic, and Helmia's aura calcum sword was still stuck in his left chest. Everyone could see that he was dying. Demon General Razel you are here. Just let me be for a while, please? Demon General Razel, looking up at the sky, begged me to stop. I said, I see. And put my sword back in its sheath. Hey, Alan. It's okay. He can't save himself anymore. His body has already started to disintegrate. What? When I said that, Cecile took a good look at the entire body of Demon General Razel. Smoke was rising from every part of his body as if something was smoldering, and I felt like he was about to burn up. Just like the Demon Blaster and Yagov, he was burning to ashes after being killed, leaving no corpse or magic stone behind. Still, is there a reason to look up to the sky? It's a wonderful tree. I wanted to show it to my people from remote places. Demon General Razel was looking at the world tree with the last of his strength, as if to burn it into his eyes. Demon General Razel. Was this the outcome you wanted? I couldn't help but ask. Unable to make the world tree belong to the Dark Elves, he himself was on the verge of decay and ashes. From all appearances, the result was not satisfactory, but the expression on his face as he gazed at the world tree seemed somehow relieved. I am dying in the promised land, it isn't so bad. But when I think of my people whose dreams remain unfulfilled, the disintegration of his body progressed rapidly. Descendant of the Prayer Maiden
Remember, even after my death, there will be a second, third, until we succeed. Yes, we will keep coming for what we have always wanted. To live and die under the world tree. After saying that much, Demon General Razel disappeared into ashes. You have defeated one Demon General. Your level has increased to 76. Your strength has increased by 50 mana, by 80 attack, by 28 endurance, by 28 agility, by 52 intelligence, by 80 and luck, by 52. I leveled up? I still needed a lot of experience. I mean, there's no indication of how much experience I gained. Is it possible that defeating one demon general increases your level by one? The experience values that were always shown weren't there that time. I concluded that regardless of the required experience value, defeating a demon general would raise my level by one. While Helmios was retrieving his Orichalcum sword, I recorded what I had learned from that battle with demon general Razel in my grimoire. Maybe there really is. This thing is called the Gate of Extra. Everyone has a Gate of Extra, and there's a way to open it. We just need to find it. What? What did you say, Alan? Oh, Karina. I just thought that maybe there really is such a thing as a Gate of Extra, and if you could get through it, you could go into Extra Mode. You. And have six hands? Karina replied, wringing her hands. I'm sure the Spirit King knows about this. Just when I was about to ask Spirit King who was riding on Sophie's shoulders about it. The Spirit King's face, which had been gentle until then, suddenly turned stern and he began to glare at Madeir. Then, his whole body began to glow all at once. Nah. The light coming off of Spirit King became bigger and bigger, and he then left Sophie's shoulders. When he reached the ground, his appearance had changed to that of a quadrupedal beast. Oh! Is he a spirit god now? He looks somewhat like a lion. It seemed to me that the spirit king, who had been suppressing his transformation, suddenly became a spirit god there. Ha ha! It's in poor taste to be sneaking around. Why don't you come out? The spirit god Rosen spoke to the air. We all looked around and then back at Spirit God Rosen in turn, as if to say, what's going on? Oh, scary, scary. I just came to take a peek. A voice came from nowhere in reply. Huh? Then someone dressed like a clown or a clown came out of nowhere. He was wearing a mask, and I didn't know why, but I didn't feel that he was a human. Why is the demon great General Kubel here? Helmios shouted to the one dressed like a clown. Chapter 213 Seconds Helmios apparently knew the man dressed as a clown who had appeared out of nowhere. It seemed that the man wearing the clown mask was Kubel, a demon great general. Whoa! There's a demon great general out there. It's been a while since I've seen you, hero Helmios. Then he bowed and curtsied in a joking gesture as if he were a clown. However, Helmios glared at Kubel, a demon great general, with such a light demeanor, with the hardest look I'd ever seen in my life. What are you doing here? He then asked why he was here in a low voice, which was unthinkable for a normal Helmios. It's okay. I'm not going to fight against a spirit god. I let you live the other day as well, didn't I? You, you. Helmio's right hand, which was holding the hilt of his sword, grew tighter. So, what did you come here for? Depending on your answer, you know. Ha ha. The spirit god Rosen, who had changed into a lion like figure, interrupted the conversation between Helmio's and demon great general Kubel. Oh! Spirit god. Go, go, go. I decided to borrow the authority of the spirit god. Like I said earlier, as the commander-in-chief of the Demon King's army for this war, I'm just investigating the reason why we were defeated. That's really all. I'd be boned too if I fought a spirit god. Hum? 
you can try and see if you can get away with just bones. Ha ha. Spirit God Rosen in the form of a lion bared his fangs and showed a maniacal face, provoking the demon great General Kubel. A demon great general and commander-in-chief of the demon king's army? At last, there's even a leader of the demon king's army. Does that mean Razel was just an executive? I thought about the organizational structure of the demon king's army. I wondered if it was possible that Demon General Razel, whom we had miraculously defeated at the very last minute, was not even an executive. Scary, scary. But then again, Razel had a lot of potential. It's a pity that he was killed. In the end, he couldn't throw away the most important thing to him like I told him to. He was pitying Demon General Razel, who had become a pile of ashes, gradually flying away and disappearing in the wind. However, although he was wearing a mask and I couldn't see his expression, I felt like he was looking at Demon General Razel like a broken toy and didn't feel any kind of compassion. We were on full alert because of the sudden appearance of the one that Helmios called the Demon Great General Kubel. He turned his gaze to the ashes of Demon General Razel without regard to our attacking stance. Is he strong enough to afford it? Oh, he looked at me. So, one of you is Alan. Alan, please raise your hand. Huh. Don't be afraid, please come out. No one responded to him, including me. Kubel, the demon great general, thought it was strange and shifted his gaze to everyone present. Clown? Clown? Hum, no choice. Alan died. While everyone was silent, I spoke up with a sad expression. What? Demon Great General, Kubel, looked at me and froze. My friends somehow knew that something had started, so they resisted the urge to say, What? Alan sacrificed himself to defeat Demon General Razel for us. There's not a shadow of him left. I showed the huge hole as a sign of a mortal struggle between Alan, who sacrificed himself and Demon General Razel. I spoke as if I were a boy who had lost everything. What? Are you lying? Alan died? Yes. Demon General Razel was too strong. We have no more hope. Are you satisfied now? Oh. Can you do it? Forget about Alan. Of course not. You're Alan. You're the only one with black hair. I am afraid you have already started to strategize how to defeat me. With both hands raised to the sky and stomping on the ground, Kubel, the demon great general, gave me a full-on Tsukomi. Really? This is the guy who planned the invasion? If you know what I look like, don't bother asking, but I understood the position of the demon great General Kubel within the Demon King's army. I stared silently at Kubel, the demon great general, wondering why and how he knew about me. And I'm hum, but that's okay. So this is how you are, Alan. We lost this war mainly because of you. Some demon generals may come to kill you again, but when they do, please play with them. That's really all I have to say today. Bye. With a wave of his hand and a bye, Kubel slowly disappeared from underneath his feet, as if he were becoming invisible. My face has also been revealed? Well, it can't be helped. With the disappearance of the demon great General Kubel, a silence descended. Alan, what are we going to do? Huh? That's right. Anyway, let's go back. I've already reported the battle situation, but let's report directly as well. Helmios, let's go back together on the way back. I have left one B-rank Ellie in Tiamo. I'd already sent word to the queen and her generals that we had defeated Demon General Razel. In that way, my friends and I with the help of Helmios and Spirit God Rosen defeated Demon General Razel. After receiving the news of the defeat of Demon General Razel, the Queen informed all the cities and places of refuge of Rosenheim's victory. 
more than two months of painful war had come to an end. There were a few remnants of the magical beasts, but the elven army was more than enough to wipe them out. And on the morning of the day, three days after the defeat of the demon general, my friends and I were in the hall of the building where the queen was living in Tiamo. The queen wished to thank us on behalf of Rosenheim. There are a few elders here who didn't play an active role in the war. The queen and her military generals weren't the only ones present to thank us, the elders in charge of internal affairs were also present. Since Nest City was going to be attacked, we moved several elders, including the eldest, to Tiamo. Thanks to that, the elders were able to arrive in time for the official victory report by Helmios and me. The elders were also participating in this event for political reasons. First of all, I would like to thank you on behalf of Rosenheim. Thank you very much. There's still a lot left to be done. So, I'm sorry that we can't stay until the end. Helmios was also there, but the queen spoke to me, and I answered her. I have to leave immediately. I hadn't explained Fortinia's condition to the queen. All I told her was that Demon General Razel was very strong and the battle was fierce. I needed to leave Rosenheim as soon as possible. What do you mean? We will definitely repay you for defeating not only the magical beasts but also Demon General Razel and returning the elves under the world tree. Oh, about that, Demon General Razel was defeated by Hero Helmios. Please do not forget about this point. I told them that thank Helmios as the reason for Demon General Razel's defeat. Actually, Helmios crushed two of Demon General Razel's three hearts. So he deserves the most credit. The generals and elders were buzzing with noise, wondering if this meant that Helmios would get the credit for defeating Demon General. I stared at the queen. I've already talked to Helmios about giving him full credit for the defeat of the Demon General Razel. Well, the Demon King's army may have found out about me, but there's not much to be gained by being famous in the human world over here. I didn't want us to be hailed as heroes. So, if our popularity hindered us from going to the S-Class dungeon, it would be us who would be in trouble. Demon General Razel was too strong. It was a miracle that we won. And I didn't think we had any chance of defeating that Demon Great General Kibble. I knew when I came to Rosenheim that I had a lot of work to do. I found out how weak I was. And to grow stronger I needed to be able to move freely. It was never about position or honor to me. Seeing me, the queen looked back at me with a troubled expression, saying, Your name is already well known in the human world. That's just like you, Alan. Ha ha! When she said that, spirit god Rosen fluffed up from Sophie's shoulder and moved to the queen's lap. After being a spirit god, I could see him on Sophie's shoulders as much as I saw him on the elf queen's lap. Apparently, the spirit god Rosen had two forms, flying squirrel when he was spirit king and lion when he became a spirit god. After the demon great general was gone, he stayed in his flying squirrel form, riding on Sophie's shoulders. No, I'm going to receive the greatest reward of all, which is the promise I made to the spirit god during the war. All of my friends will have four-star talents. You're trying something cheeky. Well, you saved my cute elves, so it's fine. Ha <laughs> ha. Spirit god Rosen didn't deny that he could raise someone's talent up to four-star. He had only said that four star was the maximum that he could give someone to and that he could only raise one star at a time. There's one more thing I want. Don't turn this one down either. I wanted one more reward from Spirit God Rosen. Thank you very much. But I can't stop thinking about what the Spirit God said before, this boy has helped me a lot and taken deeds off my shoulders many times. Eh? Ha ha? What does that mean? No, it's no big deal. But I can't wait to see what the spirit god has in store for me in return for my assistance. After I said that much, everyone seemed to understand what I was trying to say. 
Alan was there to demand a seconds of thanks, in addition to the talent change the spirit God had promised him. Chapter 214 Changing Talents When Spirit God Rosen was still a spirit king, he had promised me that if I saved Rosenheim, my friends would be allowed to change to a rarer talent that would make them stronger. As a result, I was able to get all of my friends to have four-star talents. In addition, since talent couldn't be raised to nine-star, I was thinking of giving my sister, Morris, who had no talent, the talent of a priest. If they ever decide to form a party together, Morris being a priest will form a good balance with my brother Mash Spearman and Karina's sister Lily as the fencer. I took the liberty of adding Lily as a party member, but my brother Mash was pretty good friends with Karina's sister Lily. I think I was pretty useful in the battle against the demon General Razel. Ha ha. Oh, yes. I haven't thanked you for that yet, have I? Thank you for coming to the forefront to save the elves after all these years. I thanked Spirit God Rosen in an exaggerated manner. I implied that Spirit God Rosen helped the elves and not me. And if he wanted a thank you for that, he had to ask it from the elves, not me. It also meant that Spirit God Rosen's help in the battle against Demon General Rosen didn't count as thank you to me and my friends. The Queen, the Generals, the Elders, my friends, and the Hero were all watching the game between me and the Spirit God Rosen. In particular, the Elders, who did not yet know who I was, looked confused as to what was going on between me and Spirit God Rosen. They also seemed to be wondering why the Queen and the Generals hadn't stopped me. And then it was back to square one. Like I said before, I can't change modes. But the Demons can. I'll never do that. I'll be erased by Lord Elmia. As if to interrupt me, and in a biting manner, the spirit god Rosen said that he couldn't change the mode. But. I guess this is the spirit god Rosen's way of saying thank you. He didn't say I won't, but I can't it means there's a way. I understand. I'll figure out another way to change the mode. Because I definitely need to change to extra mode. I understood the meaning of extra mode and extra skill in my fight against Demon General Razel. And I was well aware of the strength of Demon Generals that were in extra mode. I was convinced that I needed to be adventurous to find a way to change modes. I couldn't help being excited when I found a purpose other than an S-Class dungeon. Can I repay you with what I can do, now that I'm a spirit god? When I tried to find another reward, the spirit god Rosen started to say that he had decided on my reward. The spirit god Rosen had started to read my mind. Huh? Yes, that's okay. Could you please do that? I see. It's his way of thanking us for becoming a spirit god. As a spirit god, I can now change talents to five star. Ha ha. Oh. Send everyone to 1. I can only change one of your friend's talents to 5 star, Alan. You can't give 5 star to that many people. Ha <laughs> ha. I wanted all of my friends to have 5 star talents, but Spirit God Rosen denied it with a smile. He was going to increase all of my friend's talents to 4 star. But he was only going to increase one of my friend's talents to 5 star. Hum, not all of them? But from the way he said it, is there a restriction on the number of five-star talents that can exist in this world, or is the spirit god not powerful enough? Still, one, then, that's an obvious choice. I wondered if there were some other restrictions as well as him being able to change someone's mode. Then please increase Karina's. What? Me? What? Why Karina? I chose Karina to have five-star talent. Karina was surprised to hear her name, and Cecile wondered why she wasn't the one I named. Yeah, because Karina already has three-star talent and reaching four-star will only raise her talent by one star. One star? Among my friends, Karina had a three-star talent, Cecile two-star talent, and the rest had one-star talents. 
When raising their talents to four stars, all but Karina would have had their talents raised by at least two stars. We were going to enter dungeons together with each other, and they would continue to level up and grow together as well. So I wanted the number of stars increased in this talent change to be as uneven as possible. The number of stars of a talent didn't change the experience required. It was all about efficiency. My friends listened carefully as I gave them a brief explanation. And after fighting Demon General Razel, I can say for sure that we will need stronger vanguards to fight against other Demon Generals. Even with the five-star hero Helmios, Demon General Razel was able to break through and the attack me, who was the middle guard. It happened because Karina and Dogora were not strong enough. Vanguards had an important role in protecting the rear guard from the enemy, so they couldn't be so much weaker than the enemy. If we want to continue fighting demon generals in the future, we need to have stronger vanguards as it would give us a better chance of survival. Not only my friends, but also the queen, generals and elders were listening to my explanation. They seemed to be wondering if this was the wisdom of the man who eradicated the demon king's army. Well, you can tell me when you want to change your talents. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you. So, are we all going to change talents here as promised? Of course, please. You will all be level 1. We'll have to level up a bit somewhere. Then, Sophiron. Yes. You will be a spirit magician, Sophiron? Thank you. As Sophie replied, the spirit god Rosen in his flying squirrel form, who was riding on the queen's lap, floated up into the air and started shaking his hips. Isn't he doing the same motions as the spirit king's blessing? I wanted to see the motions for changing talents in his lion form. Sophie's body glowed like a flashing light, and then the light subsided. Oh! She became a spirit magician. Wow! She got half of her status transferred. Yes. Name, Sophiaron. Age, 48. Blessing, Spirit God. Talent, Spirit Magic Ein. Level, 1. Strength, 362. Mana, 811 plus 1000. Attack, 299. Endurance, 329 plus 1000. Agility, 422. Intelligence, 452. Luck, 420. Skills, Great Spirits 1, Fire Magic 1. Extra Skill, Great Spirit Manifestation. Experience, 0 out of 10. Skill Level. Great Spirits, 1. Fire Magic, 1. Skill Experience. Fire Magic, 0 out of 10. She was equipped with rings that increase her, mana, and, endurance, by 1000. I noticed that Sophie's status were quite high for someone at level 1. I remembered most level 1s having their status single digits or early double digits. However, Sophie's status had already reached triple digits. Maybe you can keep half of your previous stats as level 1 stats? Or is it because of Spirit God Rosen's blessing? Underneath Sophie's age, she had a column that said that she had received Spirit God's blessings. None of my other friends had that. She got that during our battle against Demon General Razel, but I didn't know what effect it had. Her extra skill is still the same, but her talental skills are lost. It's a shame that her talental skills disappeared, but she will probably learn similar or even more powerful skills now that she has a four-star talent. Spohi's extra skill remained unchanged from the Great Spirit Manifestation. Apparently, changing talents didn't add a new extra skill or change the previous one to a new one through the extra skill gotcha. And the notation for fire and water spirit magic is missing from Sophie's status. I guess this means that I have to learn the skill again from the beginning. I had previously heard that the higher level talent saints used the same skill as priests. 
the difference between the higher-level talent saints and priests was the range of their skill and the amount they could heal. It was true that in my previous life's games, I often used the same magic even after changing my class to a higher one. While I was happy to see half of Spohi's status transferred, I thought it was a shame that she don't have any of her previous skills. I guess I'll find out later when everyone's levels up. So, next is for Mar. You will be a master archer, huh? Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. There were still many things I wanted to verify, but I made a note of what I had deduced and what I wanted to verify in my grimoire and check the pattern of former's talent change. Like Sophie, Fermar also became level 1 after his talent change. His skills were lost as well. He also had half of his status transferred. Name, Fermar. Age, 68. Talent, Master Archer. Level, 1. Strength, 661. Mana, 358 plus 1000. Attack, 865 plus 1000. Endurance, 570. Agility, 364. Intelligence, 241. Luck, 392. Skills, Master Archer 1, Farsight 1, Archery 6. Extra Skill, Arrow of Light. Experience, 0 out of 10. Skill Level Divine Archery, 1 Farsight, 1 Skill Experience Farsight, 0 out of 10 He was equipped with rings that increased his mana and attack by 1,000. I see. It's the same as Sophie's. So she didn't inherit half of your status with the Spirit God's blessing? But still, it helps to increase the firepower of long-range attacks. With the half-status transfer effect, the attack of former's long-range attacks increased quite a bit. You're next, Karina. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Oh. What's next after Master Swordsman? The spirit god Rosen changed Karina's talent. What do you think? Alan and his friends peer into the grimoire to see if Karina has changed talents. Sword King Name, Karina Age, 14 Talent, Sword King Level, 1 Strength, 1220 Mana, 477 Attack, 1220 plus 1000 Endurance, 856 Agility, 824 plus 1,000. Intelligence, 487. Luck, 598. Skills, Sword King 1, Slash 1, Swordsmanship, 6. Extra Skill, Limit Break. Experience, 0 out of 10. Skill Level. Sword King, 1. Slash, 1. Skill experience. Slash, 0 out of 10. She was equipped with rings that increased her attack and agility by 1000. Oh, my god! She has 1200 attack at level 1. She can defeat Maidgarsh with that, can't she? The talent that surpassed the three star master swordsman was Sword King. I was astonished when I saw Karina's status. Alan thought that with this status, even at level 1, Karina would be able to defeat the B-rank magical beast, Maidgarsh. Chapter 215 Hero King The talent above Master Swordsman was the Sword King. Karina also had half of her status transferred. Hooray! Karina was gripping her hands, checking her own power. Your status has suddenly changed, so you have to be careful. Now let's move on to Dagora. You will be a barbarian. Barbarian. In my mind, someone using an axe fit the image of a barbarian, so the talent barbarian was quite fitting. A barbarian. Not bad. Dagora couldn't seem to stop grinning either. 
The word barbarian must have some kind of magical power to tickle a boy's heart. Dagora also glowed following spirit god Rosen's hip shaking. Name, Dagora. Age, 14. Talent, Barbarian. Level, 1. Strength, 661. Mana, 358. Attack, 871 plus 1000. Endurance, 573. Agility, 362 plus 1000. Intelligence, 241. Luck, 392. Skills, Barbarian 1, Full Body 1, Axemanship 6. Extra Skill, Body and Soul. Experience, 0 out of 10. Skill Level. Barbarian, 1. Full Body, 1. Skill Experience. Full Body, 0 out of 10. He was equipped with rings that increased his attack and agility by 1000. I recorded Dagora's level 1 status in my grimoire as well. Dagora had a 1 star talent, so he could still change his talent two more times. I guess Cecile is next. You have two choices, Cecile. A sage or a grand mage. Oh! The talent has split off from mage. It's like the tree of talents is branching out. What? I can choose? Yes. Hum. Which one do you think is better? Cecile started to worry. If you don't mind me choosing, I'd go with the grand mage. Sages are better at recovery magic and support magic than grand mages, but we already have Sophie, Kiel and me for that. So, I think you should go with grand mage. I wanted Cecile to become a grand mage. Sages could use recovery magic, attack magic, and support magic. But the grand mages only focused on attack magic. Since we already had enough people who could do what a sage could, I wanted Cecile to specialize in attack magic. Well, there are only four types of magic to learn in normal mode. Unless extra mode allows for more types. Yeah. If Alan wants me to be a grand mage, that's fine with me. Cecile chose to become a grand mage, which she had originally planned to be. You will be a grand mage. Ha ha. Saying that, the spirit god Rosen changed Cecile's talent to Grand Mage. Name, Cecile Granville. Age, 14. Talent, Grand Mage. Level, 1. Strength, 514. Mana, 868 plus 2000. Attack, 330. Endurance, 421. Agility, 510. Intelligence, 1195. Luck, 480. Skills, Grand Magic 1, Fire Magic 1, Kumite 3. Extra Skill, Small Meteorite. Experience, 0 out of 10. Skill Level. Grand Magic, 1. Fire Magic, 1. Skill Experience. Fire magic, 0 out of 10. She was equipped with two rings that increased her mana by 1,000 each. Hum! Cecile's strength and endurance are low, so it would be helpful if they could be raised by changing talents. I found out that a new talent came with a strong new game specification. So, I wanted to check if one could erase their weakness by changing talent by comparing the status in my grimoire and analyzing it. I became a grand mage? Let me see. I am a grand mage. I did it. Ah. Cecile peeked into my grimoire to see if she had become a grand mage. She must be happy to be the grand mage she had dreamed of being. My friends were cackling and checking their new talents in my grimoire, but of course only they could see my grimoire. The queen and the generals were looking at each other, wondering what they were doing. You are next, Kiel. You also have two choices. 
you can be a bishop or a warrior priest. I have two too. Hum. I see, a warrior priest who can also attack, or a bishop who specializes in recovery magic. Since Kiel is a money grubber, wouldn't he prefer a bishop? I was convinced by Cecile's words. It was common knowledge to us that Kiel loved money. Huh? Cecile, what do you mean? I meant exactly what I said. Well, yes. Kiel would benefit from a talent that specializes in recovery magic. I wanted Kiel to become a bishop who specializes in recovery magic, just as I had wanted Cecile to be a grand mage instead of a sage. Warrior priest is easier to use than a specialized talent, but they won't be very useful while fighting against demons. Demon generals were very strong, and thanks to the help of Helmios and the spirit god Rosen, as well as Dagora, who was able to use his extra skill at the last moment, and Karina, who was able to use her skills while her extra skill was active, we miraculously won. We had won thanks to a series of miracles, but there was no guarantee of similar miracles happening in the future. Miracles were important, but I believed that in order to improve our odds, one party had to have a specialized member for each task. I see. I'll be a bishop then. You will be a bishop, Kiel. Ha ha. Spirit God changed Kiel's talent to bishop. Name, Kiel. Age, 14. Talent, bishop. Level, 1. Strength, 394 plus 1000. Mana, 750. Attack, 299. Endurance, 421. Agility, 480. Intelligence, 661 plus 1000. Luck, 602. Skills, Bishop 1, Recovery Magic 1, Swordsmanship 3. Extra skill, God's Drop. Experience, 0 out of 10. Skill level. Bishop, 1. Recovery magic, 1. Skill experience. Recovery magic, 0 out of 10. He was equipped with rings that increased his strength and intelligence by 1,000. Oh! Kiel was also quite happy to be a bishop. Kiel checked his status as he hit his own body. All right, well, I guess we're all done changing talents now. They're all more specialized versions of the talents we had. In terms of coordination, we won't have to change much. Karina, the Sword King, 5. Cecile, the Grand Mage, 3. Dagora, the Barbarian, 1. Kiel, the Bishop, 1. Sophie, the spirit mage, 3. Fromar, the master archer, 3. As I looked at my friends, the spirit god spoke up. It's not over yet. There's one more. Helmios. Eh? Me? Oh. You're going to change his talent too? As a reward for helping us defeat demon general Razel? As a reward for your help in defeating Demon General Razel, Lord Elmia wants to change your talent. He will take over for a bit. What? Will the Creator God change my talent? What do you mean by take over for a bit? Everyone present in the room listened in silence to the conversation between Helmios and the Spirit God, wondering if Helmios would also have his talent changed. As I looked at the spirit god, wondering what he meant as well, the spirit god Rosen in his flying squirrel form, who had been fluffing around, came to a hollow, lethargic standstill. I am the creator god Elmia. Hero Helmios, you have fought very hard to protect my children. Thank you very much. What? Huh? Creator god Elmia took over spirit god Rosen. The voice was clearly different from Spirit God Rosen's. The neutral voice sounded as if it was soaking into my body. No, I only did what I had to do. Helmios gave a humble response to the flying squirrel that the Creator God had taken over. Oh, Helmios. 
I've given you a hard path to travel. I will give you the opportunity to change talent. Please become a hero king and continue to protect my children. Hero king? After saying that much, the spirit god's hand pointed at Helmios. Then a warm light enveloped Helmios. When the light went out, there was no change in Helmios, but he must have had his talent changed to Hero King. Helmios, your new talent is Hero King. Ha ha. The spirit god's tone of voice returned to normal as we checked on Helmios. The creator god seemed to have immediately disappeared from the spirit god Rosen's body after changing Helmios' talent. I see, above a five-star hero is a six-star hero king. Can the creator god change talents up to six-star? I recorded Helmio's talent change in my grimoire. I'm a hero king. Helmio's, who was a hero king after his talent change, started to think about something. Then he looked at me. What can I do for you? Helmio's. I remembered what you said that day, Alan, that there is a way to go beyond despair. Beyond despair, I remember saying something like that at the Academy's martial arts tournament. I had guessed that Helmios was fighting the Demon King's army while being in the midst of despair. When Helmios saw my friends changing talents and getting new talents, he probably thought that it was one way to become stronger. And Helmios himself was able to take up a new talent as a hero king. That's right. That's why you have to have fun while searching for this or that. Otherwise, you'll never get beyond despair. Have fun, huh? That's just like you, Alan. Helmios chuckled at that. Thank God the hero is getting stronger. Now that the human side is stronger, I can leave the central continent to them. My friends and I were going to leave Rosenheim and return to the central continent. We had things to do after we returned to the Central Continent. We need to meet up with Merle and talk about the future. We had to prepare to go to the Baki's Empire and for the S-Class Dungeon. My immediate goal was to get the equipment ready and get my friends to change talents. Your Majesty! What has become of the Baki's Empire? I confirmed with the Queen the situation of the Baki's Empire ruled by the Dwarves. The Baki's empire had been attacked by an army of one million demon king troops after all. My friend Merle was also supposed to be fighting. Don't worry about that Master Alan. We have received word from Emperor Baki's a short while ago that the Baki's empire is gaining the upper hand in the war. This is due to the elven elixir. That's good to know. After saying that much, the elven queen showed a troubled expression. It's just that they've asked for more elven elixir. Wow, the Baki's empire is getting greedy. Well, that's fine. If they want the elven elixir, tell them there's a condition they have to take. I can see this as an easy way to get into the Baki's empire. What? I understand. I'll talk to Emperor Baki's that way. How are you planning, Master Alan? Are you going to be in Rosenheim for a while? If so, we would like to hold some kind of event for the heroes who led us to victory. No, the war against the Demon King is not over. There are many things we need to do. For that reason, I would like to return to the Central Continent tomorrow. I have to get back before they find out about Fortania. I see, the Elven Queen replied regretfully. In this way, the battle between the millions of magical beasts of the Demon King's army led by demon generals and demons that united them ended in victory for Rosenheim. And so, Alan and his friends set out to become stronger in order to conquer the S-Class dungeon in the Baki's Empire. With this chapter, the fourth arcade of the series is over.